Hello everyone, before we start today's video, if you could all do me a solid and lightly tap the like button, perhaps share the video about and leave a comment. If you are not subscribed, subscribe as well. It would greatly help this channel. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, welcome back to a Megon 2 Electric Boogaloo. Today we're going to talk about YouTube, not the stuff where Susan Wojcicki almost took a job with Elon Musk's Tesla before taking over as CEO of YouTube, couldn't care less about that. The free speech aspect though, YouTube like to market areas of their platform as being in favour of free speech. But if we know anything about YouTube over the many years many of us have been active on the platform, that is not the case. We do often find that they delete the wrong creator, either because they've interpreted what they do as wrong think, and that includes prefacing it with usually demonetizing the channel first to try and bully them off the site. Many creators are um, spread on alternate platforms like BitChute, Rumble, and others. So it's a hit because YouTube's the biggest. But at the same time, it is still possible as a creator to continue going forward even without YouTube or AdSense from YouTube. Let's not forget here, many have Patreon, Subscribestar, Streamlabs, PayPal, Coffee. the list goes on. You then of course run the risk of being considered a grifter and or e-beggar. But with YouTube, they do their best to try and get rid of certain types of creators and in some instances just get rid of them. A lot of people during coronavirus know this all too well, because when one was speaking on the subject of the covid kufnus channness one had to tread incredibly carefully, as if it wasn't difficult enough as a news commentary channel to do news-related subjects, because let's not forget here, if the news is entirely filled with one subject, your audience aren't going to be interested. But to add to that the fact that you then had to navigate, if you had to touch on coronavirus, how you touched on it, what you showed within the video, and then to try and get it through monetization. Because again, this is someone's job. Whether you consider it a job, the viewer that is, hello, there's a chance that you might look down on it. That's fine. Many of us, myself included, have IRL work away from this because, well, a stable income is always quite handy. YouTube made it a point during that time to yeet so many videos and so many channels. Some bigger names that were hit weren't actually involved in this part, they were just yeeted because of other things compounding with lawsuits, which are spiraling out of control and are becoming quite amusing to see unfold. But onto the free speech thing, because this is important. I know I bleat on, I ramble, get used to it. I'm not going to apologize for it here. Earlier this month, an Indonesian journalist called Najwa Shihab interviewed Susan Wojcicki and asked her about her platform's attitude towards government's restriction of free speech online. Many creators, myself included, have said that you should not be restricting free speech. There are such things as consequences, yes. It's called terms of service, but this is how you restrict the free speech aspect. Can you be free speech? if your terms of service prevent you from being able to say certain things? The answer is no. There is no but, it's no. Najwa has actually called government suppression of voices online a worrying trend around the world, which Susan agreed to, being quoted as saying, in general, we want to enable political speech. So like when we do get requests that involve suppression of political speech, that's a place where we're very hesitant or resistant to removing it. They don't have to move it though, that's the thing. YouTube don't have to do much to remove it. In fact, in many instances, they do something a little cuter. What they do is, they take your video and they bury it. And as punishment for that video existing, they're going to, what many believe it to be, shadow ban you for a period of time. Either until you quit, you change your tune, or you ride it out and somehow come out on the other side semi-squeaky clean. Wojcicki has said that civil unrest is one of a few exceptions where her platform could move to constrict speech, saying we want to enable people to express their points of view and enable as much free speech as we possibly can. Najwa then asked if YouTube says no to government requests. YouTube does actually adhere to laws in every country, but is alleged to stand up to pro-censorship dictatorships 
claiming if you, for example, have a non-democratically elected government and they're asking us to remove content that would be suppressing free speech of people who are being persecuted in some way, YouTube is more likely to keep the content up because you're so punk. But if anyone questions the other side to this, you get very antsy about it. Take, for example, Ukraine and Russia. People have started questioning Ukraine a fair bit. I haven't seen much of their content. I had to go search for it, and it took a while for any of it to pop up in my search bar. Almost as if it's kind of being buried a little. And it's handy that content exists because you always need to see both sides of an argument. You need to understand everything before you make an informed decision on any subject. So I recommend going to places like BitChute and Rumble and so on, so on being another platform that I've just made up of course, to digest those opinions because chances are it is being buried on YouTube. Covid is proof of that. Oddly enough, the consequences for what YouTube did during the time of lockdowns has led to an increase of those who are more conservative leaning to speak up and say that YouTube needs to be held to account. Take for example, GOP Senator Ron Johnson, who demanded YouTube give account to the Senate for the company's moderation policy surrounding COVID-19 that allegedly enabled a troubling track record of repeated censorship of a US senator. Ron Johnson is requesting that YouTube provide the committee with documentation concerning the development and implementation of the company's content moderation policies. If anyone remembers, YouTube adhered strictly to the CDC, even when at times the CDC ran counter to the then fledgling Biden administration. YouTube says that the COVID-19 misinformation policy, moderation that is, was created with help from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, Food and Drug Administration, and other third-party health authorities, like the ADA. <laughs> With Ron Johnson being quoted as saying, YouTube has displayed a troubling track record of censoring a sitting US senator. The proceedings of the United States Senate, journalists that interview me, and the display of data that is entirely generated from US government health agencies. The letter also documents in detail multiple instances which started in October 2021 in which Ron Johnson alleges YouTube censored and suspended him for his expressed views of early treatment of COVID-19, his opposition to vaccine mandates to children and workers, and advocacy for individuals injured by vaccines. Recently in New York, those that worked for the police who were mandated initially or threatened that if they didn't have the jab they'd be fired, won against that, that they cannot be dismissed for not wanting the jab. I know somebody is now going to insert the comment that what Ron Johnson was saying could have led to the loss of lives. The problem you have is you are then derailing the original discussion to go down a different path or invalidate this argument on a what if, a what about, and I find that quite dangerous. Everyone should be allowed to speak their mind. They really should. And by removing the content, the senator then has a leg to stand on when it comes to a platform marketing itself towards free speech, but looking like it only allows certain speech. Stifling it in any direction, especially when it leans more one way politically, is not free speech. It also implies that those that you stand up to, governments that are not governments, but authoritarian dictatorships, you only stand up to them because they're also that leaning, which is not the case in a number of countries, especially those that markets themselves towards socialism, which as we all know, only works in death. <laughs> that joke might not work on many of you. Oh no. I'm not taking it back. 